I want to pick up, up where with Anna left off about this potential leverage buyout with Walgreen Boots. We continue to see these deal sizes just really grow in size. Are you concerned that the private markets are looking frothy? Uh, yes, I think it's a concern which many people are voicing. I think this deal, for example, is a sign that investors are getting more and more interested in private markets and therefore deals like that are allowed to happen effectively. Is, is the private debt side, though, is it more safe? Is it looking less concerning to you than private equity? Uh, definitely so. So we believe that we are active in an um, yeah, all-weather asset class because we are in the safest part of the capital structure um, and therefore all equity and mezzanine in the capital structure needs to be wiped out before our piece in the capital structure is affected. But, but still, there are definitely some concerns out there in the market, even though debt might be safer. A lot of macro concerns, for example, Brexit. When we continue to have this delay of Brexit uncertainty, have you seen deal flow in the UK start to pull back at all? Uh, we have seen some impacts on the larger side of deals. However, we are um, in involved in smaller deals. And we have seen a very active pipeline of those deals. We are obviously very cautious around analyzing potential Brexit risks, but still we have done a good amount of deals in the UK as well. So it's not that um, no deals are happening there. Mm -hmm. so, so where do you see the best opportunities now in the market? Um, so with regard to Europe, um, where we are active, um, we see most um, opportunities in markets where the banking system has consolidated. So one example would be Spain, for example. Um, uh, the opposite of that would be Italy, actually, where the banking system has not consolidated. We see some opportunities, but it's um, much, much less active for us. And, that, and that's certainly been a trend, right, taking more of the share in terms of direct lending from banks. Is that something that's going to continue to pick up? Yeah, we believe so. Um, private debt uh, or direct lending specifically is a very new asset class. It came into existence after the global financial crisis. And obviously some of the lending banks have done has shifted into that area, but there's much more growth to be had, in our opinion. It's newer, but there are definitely more players getting involved. I mean, we've seen these really big funds who yeah. weren't in private debt before move in. Is the market saturated in terms of players? Yeah, uh, exactly. Lots of former private equity players have moved into private debt. Um, and we believe there's a mainstream segment, um, which is, you know, decently saturated. However, there's more and more niche strategies. So, for right. example, we are active in the lower middle market. There's um, players which are active in specific asset-based lending classes. So um, the same trend as in private equity will prevail, i.e. a specialization into certain areas. And, and so finally, Kristen, we are here at the Women in Private Markets Conference. Mm -hmm. So clearly this conversation about gender diversity is one that's taking place. Why is it an important conversation besides just ticking boxes? Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm very lucky to work in a very diverse organization in terms of uh, nationalities and, and gender as well. So it's not on top of my mind anymore, really, but it's obviously a very big topic for the financial services industry in general. Um, we believe it really matters because um, we are analyzing typically downside risks and having a diverse uh, base of people helps you capture more of those risks. If everybody thinks the same way, you will just capture a small amount of the risks which actually exist. Um, the other aspect is we obviously need to work with companies to convince them to engage with us. And again, having a diverse uh, set of um, members in the team help uh, to make those conversations easier.